Nobody likes an elitist. All right, if it seems like it's been a uh, not that long since I did a, uh, an Animation Junkie episode. It's because this is not a typical Animation Junkie episode. This is this month's Patreon-sponsored review. That's right. Hop on over to Patreon. And it is, in fact, possible for you to support me at a tier that allows you to just flat out tell me what to review. And I will. So, um, this month... I'm going to be taking a look at uh, an animated film that I like quite a bit and from back in the days when uh, Warner Brothers DC was consistently reliable as, a, as opposed to now only occasionally being good. And we have Superman versus the Elite. I love this movie. This is a, I mean, this is a great story as well. I would encourage people to seek out the, uh, the comic book story that this is based off of, which was called... What's so funny about truth, justice, and the American way? So I'm going to talk about this, and um, I will eventually talk spoilers because I'm going to want to talk about the the climax of this thing. But um, let's start with the nice big broad strokes. This is the movie that I like to point to, and and say, you know what? Watch this. For anybody who ever tries to make the claim that Superman as a Boy Scout doesn't work, is irrelevant, you know, isn't interesting, there's nothing you can do with him. Anyone who makes that claim, I immediately go, have, have you seen Superman vs. the Elite? Because you need to see Superman vs. the Elite. Because it, for me, it is in the span of, what is this, 75 minutes? Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, no, not even. 74 minutes. This makes the case for why Superman being the paragon, being the idealist, and living by the ideals that he has is not only a key part of his character, but is vital to having him function. And having and if you ever take that away, he doesn't work. And so the story here is that a new group of sort of upstart superheroes has emerged, and they call themselves the Elite. It is a four-person team consisting of um, a man who sort of has energy absorption and um, disper and um, blast powers. His name's Coldcast. There is a magic user called the Hat who can literally pull anything out of his hat from a bottle of booze to a dragon. There is a woman called Menagerie whose body is kind of... She, she basically has a parasite she can control. It's all these little sort of things that she can send out and to attack people or they can form like wings for her and, and stuff like that. And then this team is led by Manchester Black who is a, uh, a telekinetic and telepath. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, he is not that far from being DC's answer to Jean Grey, as far as power set goes. Um, but so very powerful um, telekinetic powers and, and a very powerful telepath. And they show up and they're a bit rough around the edges. They're new to trying all this. Um, they're kind of sloppy, but their heart's in the right place. They want to help. But as time goes on, Superman is seeing the path that they're going down and realizing they don't want to just uphold the law. They want to be the law. They want to, they want to be able to dictate what the law is. They, they believe that it is not only sometimes okay, that maybe it's even the correct thing to do to just kill bad people. And that sets them on a road to confrontation. Now, that, as far as how far into the film things actually start to go that way for a film this short, you know, it's about 20, 25 minutes in. So I would have actually considered that a minor spoiler, except one of the few quibbles I do have with this is the title. It's that it's Superman versus the Elite. I wish they, I wish it had been named Superman and the Elite because. I feel like putting the verses in there gives the game away just on the title. The, that 
what this is going to come to. Now, that's not to say that even if you didn't know that, if you didn't have that title, you wouldn't necessarily go, they're gonna come to a head eventually, but when the title is versus, then you're kind of just waiting, okay, when is it going to escalate to a fight? Like, you know for certainty, as opposed to going, I'm pretty sure, no, you know, it's in the title. So that's one of my few complaints. Now, I do understand why they, they didn't go with the original title, What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way. It's actually a great title, but it's not a very snappy one for a, for a movie. But I, I wish they called it Superman and the Elite. I, I wish that's what they'd gone with. So, but that's that's your basic setup. And uh, there's there's a little bit other stuff in there. This is this is pretty. This is not even pretty. It is distinctly solidly a Superman story. You're not getting other heroes showing up. He doesn't call in the Justice League. We don't check in with Batman. Um, there's none of that. And actually, in terms of recurring villains, the the main one that they have was one that I hadn't heard of prior to watching this guy. A guy by the name of Atomic Skull, who is. It's pretty much exactly what he sounds like. And so, yeah, I mean, you've got that. And there's like, a, you get a little glimpse of like Dr. Light and some other stuff. So there's plenty of stuff for, um, you know, causing problems. But the thing is, it this movie and what makes it so good is that it's not just about Superman coming into conflict with these other heroes and their methods. It has to do with the world becoming skeptical that Superman's way can work and the world starting to side with the elite and think that their way of doing it is the right way to do it. And I almost started talking about the climax. I will hold off on that for as long as I possibly can, but it really does dive into the importance of Superman's worldview and his philosophy and his feeling that life is worth preserving and you know he won't make the exception for the one person out of a thousand who is a truly awful human being that some of us would probably think yeah maybe that person should be wiped clean he won't make that exception because he know he he believes that it is more important to be sure to preserve everyone because the minute you make that exception for one person you'll make it for another and another and then how do you gauge how do you keep your center how do you keep your moral grounding when you start to make those kinds of exceptions and it's a really good performance for superman both in, in the voice and in the animation because you get his frustration with seeing the tide of public opinion turn against him and, and he's not naive. He understands why people are going this way, why they want this. But it's still really hard for him to see. And it's done really well. And he has a great scene about midway through with Pa Kent. Um, that's, just, that's just a terrific... Pa Kent has a great line. He said, when people are hurting, they'll be so quick to jump onto a bandwagon and they won't pay attention to who's driving it. Um, that, <laughs> that, was, that was nice. And, and I think, you know, at the time it was made, and certainly now it hasn't stopped being relevant because one of the things that's really nicely done about Manchester Black specifically, um, who as the leader of the elite is sort of the main one we spend time with, he is charming and charismatic. He's kind of he's kind of a British punk rock thing going on. He's got dyed purple hair. He's got you know big uh, earrings that look like just hunks of metal in his ear. Um, you know he that's that's the kind of guy that he is. But he's kind of oddly charming in that, and he has that guy who just tells it like it is. Guy who doesn't deal in any BS. And it does, you you get that appeal of the guy who cuts through the bull crap and, you know, says what everyone is really thinking. Whereas Superman is the guy who's trying very hard to rise above the things you think but know you shouldn't say because Superman is the, is the part of humanity that says, well, there's a reason you know you shouldn't say that um, or think that or do that. But it it was a very good call to have Manchester Black not be, you know, some 
like over angsty goth looking you know or or sort of doom cult looking guy like there's a ton of ways they could have done this but going kind of shaggy scrappy charismatic was a real good call because it helps sell how the situation and what's going on with the world and this guy specifically espousing his um opposite well not complete opposite but his uh, opposition to the ideology of superman you can see where people would latch on to pretend part of it the message given the state of the world that we see in the movie but also because of who's delivering it and that he has a charisma and he can bring people into that fold and it is just a really well done movie that it, that while being actually pretty um for the for the animated films pretty brutal at times like it's i you know i say it shows what why superman is important to be the idealist and be the boy scout that's not to say that this movie is fun and cuddly it's not because the way that it shows why it's important for him to be that is by showing you all this other stuff going on around him showing you a world where that is not the norm so that he stands in contrast to it so I'm going to start getting a little bit more into spoilers because I want to talk in more detail about the climax because I love this climax so much. So here we go. The whole thing with Superman appearing to have snapped is so brilliantly executed because you've got Manchester Black and the rest of the elite fighting him they believe fighting him to the death but manchester black also kind of believes that superman is so stuck in his ways that he's gonna die rather than cross a line and superman ultimately find out at the end he didn't cross the line but he lets them think he has he lets them think that he has taken all the restraints off and he's just going at them and they are the the first three are just taken out so quickly because suddenly might makes right becomes a lot less appealing when a bigger guy shows up and you realize oh crap i'm not top of the food chain anymore it's funny how quickly the whole idea of you know the people with the power should wield it you know how quickly that can turn on you once you realize there's someone more powerful than you so the way that that goes down and the escalation and the sense of fear and dread from from the elite from lois from the populace at large seeing or believing that they see are seeing superman snap see superman become well more or less become um uh injustice superman really uh this original story does predate injustice to be clear um but it's terrifying honestly it's he's he's just sort of stalking after manchester black and he's got this one completely bloodshot eye because uh manchester had like burst the capillaries in his eye earlier and it's unsettling and it should be because that's the thing it is hammering home the point superman should never be this and he won't be and he's not because people tend to forget that superman for all the the touting of his strength and his flight and the the heat vision or the x-ray vision that he's also very smart and he's very compassionate and it and if there's a solution where he can basically do no harm, he will do everything he can to figure it out and do that. And that's ultimately what he does here. And it's perfect. It's the perfect way to deal with what it is that he is confronting and what it is that he's dealing with. And what's, what's great about this is that it's not, it never sits down and stops and has a protracted conversation about the philosophy behind this film in terms of 
what's right and why Superman's version of right is important, especially in a in a fictional universe where someone like him exists. Nobody really opines excessively on that. There's like little snippets here and there, but nobody ever sits down and lays out the moral because this reaffirmation of Superman is baked into the narrative because you put him up against a group of people who are going to not just push him physically, not just push him in a fight, but push his moral code as far as they possibly can. Break it if they're able to. And that's a good way to, to show how his moral code makes him who he is by putting that at the heart of the, and again, not in an expository way, in a, the nature of the conflict all pivots and depends on him keeping his moral center. And it's really, it's just, it's just amazing. I really do like it. Aside from the title, I, if I were gonna nitpick, um, some of the animation isn't the best. There's something about the animation on Manchester Black's mouth. I think it's because he's the only character with a fully defined set of lips. Like everybody else just kind of has the, you know, the the line that, you know, that opens and it articulates, but he's got, he, he's got purple lips to match his hair. So he's, you know, his, his lips are fully articulated all the way uh, around um, and outlined and it looks a little weird. But I mean, this is nitpicky. I think conceptually this is a great story. I think what it is setting out to do is a really good thing to do. And it, and it's something that I think a lot of these, for lack of a better term, old fashioned or super moral heroes should have reaffirmed about them every now and then with characters like this, like Captain America. It's important to remind us why they should stay the paragons that sometimes we mock them for being. So I think I'll wrap it up there. Hopefully, if you're this far into the video, you've seen the movie because I did talk about stuff that I, I really think you should have you should have already seen it. I hope you weren't hearing it from me from the first time. But whatever your thoughts are, Superman versus the Elite. Have you seen it? What'd you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop them down in the comments and let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of buttons there for likes and subscribes and all sorts of things. Um, plus a link to the Patreon down in the description and a whole bunch of links besides. Check them out if you feel like it. And remember, folks, you're the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.